So today I'm going to do the exponential and logarithmic functions test. There will be a link to this test in the comments below and you can go download it, try it, and then come back. So um, logarithms, hopefully you haven't found it too difficult. It's a good time for you to boost your mark with um, just a little bit of practice. Okay, so let's go. The first question asks you to convert between exponential and logarithmic form logarithmic to exponential. That's a basic task that you should be good with by now. So this is the old b uh, log bay, right? b a log bay. If you remember that from my lesson, you will have no problem converting between the two. So this is my base, my exponent, my answer. So the 4 becomes my base. The answer goes here, and the exponent is the over here, right? Base, exponent, answer. So 4 to the 6.5 gives you 81.92. And this one log km equals p, so k to the p equals m. That's always easier to go the other way, I think. Okay, evaluate each of the following. Log base 327. So that's the same as log base 3 of 3 cubed, right? So what do you raise 3 to to get 3 cubed? Well, your answer is just 3. Log base 2 of 1 over 16. So 16 is 2 to the 4th power, but it's 1 over it. So if this was just log base 2, 16, you'd say 4, but because it's 1 over it, it's negative 4 to the negative power. So it puts 1 over the number. <coughs> Log base 5 of the cube root of 25. So you want to rewrite this with a base of 5. So this is the same as the log base 5 of 5. So 25 is 5 squared, and this is 1 third of that. So it's 5 to the 2 thirds. So my answer is just 2 thirds. Log base 2.5 of 1. So the question is, what do you raise 2.5 to to get 1? And the answer, anything to the power of 0 equals 1. Log base 7, 0. Oh, well, I can't raise 7 to any power to get 0 because you know that 7, if I was doing the exponential of it, it would go like this and it has an asymptote here. So this is undefined <coughs> or no solution. Excuse me. <clears throat> Still have this darn cold. Okay, um, 10 to the log of 5.12. So if there's 10 and this is log base 10, then this is just your answer here. There's really no calculation required, although you could prove that if you need to. And 3 log base 3. Okay, so I have the same here, 3 and log base 3. So I just have to move this 2 up here and make it 6 squared which is 36. Log base 7, 4 to 4 decimal places. That's where you're going to need to get your calculator out. So that's just the same as that's equal to the log of 4 divided by the log of 7. That's called the change of base form. So we can evaluate log 4 divided by log 7. And we get 0.7124. 0 0.7124. Make sure you answer the question for decimals. Express is a single log. So this is where you need to use the rules that you've learned about logarithms. So the 2 becomes an exponent. There's no other numbers in front here. So um, I also know that if it's a minus, that means I'm going to divide. If it's a plus, I'm going to multiply. So this is equal to the log of 9. Okay, so I made this 9, oh sorry, log base 5, forgot the base 5, of 9, and I'm going to divide it by 15, and I'm going to multiply by 20. So that's the log base 5 of 180 over 15. Now, how are you going to evaluate that? Well, it doesn't say to evaluate, it just said express as a single log. And um, 180 over 15, oh, we could have simplified this up here, would have been easier. Divide by 3, 
five goes in here four so I get log base five twelve or you could have divided it out here but probably should have simplified it there if I was on the ball okay evaluate again so we have log base two they're all base two so that's good and their minus signs means everything's divided so this is the log base two of so I have three divided by six I'm just going to multiply it as times a six it's the same thing right minus log base two twelve so times one over twelve so that gives me um, three goes into here two and I get log base two of um, one over so I think I did a boo-boo here yeah this should have been nine right were you were you on that one hopefully okay because I, I forgot to do this part that's nine so nine over 72 that's one over eight and what do I raise two to get one over eight so let's write that out for you like this first log base two of one over eight so eight is two cubed so I can write it like this or even better if I write it like this and then you know that your answer is just minus three okay so that's page one let's move it on solve for X where X is an element of real numbers okay so you're kind of stuck here unless you write it into exponential form right so x to the four fifths um, I should have put an equal sign there yet what because we need to write this we need to write x to the four fifths is equal to 16 so to get rid of this four fifths power that would be like me doing this I'll show you if I multiply it by 5 over 4 so if I raise it to this exponent, that will give me a 1 here and 16 to the 5 over 4. So what's the 4 through to 16? 4 through to 16 is 2. 2 to the 5th is 32. And my left side, I just have x. So x equals 32. And this one here, I have log. Let's rewrite this because we have 9, 3, 3. So let's write this as log base 9. 3 and this is 3 to the half power right so this is really like this 3 times 3 to the half so that's two halves and one half is log base 9 of 3 to the 3 halves is equal to x <coughs> so once you have that you can write it now in exponential form anytime you get stuck remember you can always flip between the two formats to help you sometimes it really helps a lot like now look watch 9 to the x equals 3 to the 3 halves but this is 9 and I want it to be 3 so that's the same as 3 to the 2x right 3 squared is 9 so 3 to the 2x equals 3 to the 3 halves and now I can just ignore the bases and equate the exponents so I would get 2x is equal to 3 halves and x is equal to 3 halves divided by 2, 3 quarters. Okay, letter C here. It says there's, we're still solving here for x is an element of real numbers. So correct answer to four decimal places. Okay, so we just have a lot of numbers here. So we know we're going to have to take the log somewhere, right? So if I divide by 3.5 on each side, that's going to give me 45 divided by 3.5 is equal to 2.4 to the 3x. Okay, now you're going to take the log of both sides. So the log of 45 divided by 3.5 is equal to, and I'm going to bring this forward because I'm going to take the log, so 3x log of 2.4. And then I'm going to do this log work. So I'm going to have, I didn't leave enough room, bad teacher. So I'd have the log, I'm going to write a little bit smaller, of 45 divided by 3.5 divided by the log of 2.4 is equal to 3x. 
So I would do that first and then divide by three. So let's see what we get for this. Oops, turn it on. So I have the log and I'll put it in brackets because you have to divide this first. Log of this and then put a bracket and I'm going to divide that by the log of 2.4 and that gives me 2.917. Now we want four decimal places so I'm going to put two here is 3x and I'm going to divide that by three to get one x and I get point uh, 9724, approximately 0 0.9724. Okay, here's another one here. 5 to the x plus 3 equals 8 to the x minus 3, correct to four decimal places. Okay, so again, you're in exponential form, so you're going to switch to logarithmic form. Take the log of both sides of these equations, and that's going to bring your exponents forward. So I'm going to have x plus 3 times the log of 5. Now remember, log of 5 is just a number. And I have x minus 3 times the log of 8. So this is, um, you can switch this right away to numbers if you want. The log of 5, just multiply everything by log 5 this by. So what I mean is I have x log 5 plus 3 log 5 is equal to x log 8 minus 3 log 8. So <coughs> you can go ahead now and just plug in the values for the log of the log of 5 here. So I could or I could move the x's around. There, there's lots of op opportunities here for I was going to say for mistakes. <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's hope not. Okay, so that's going to be the same as minus 3 log 5 minus 3 log 8. And if I factored out the x, I would just have this. x log 5 minus log 8 equals um, minus 3. I keep trying to decide if I want to start solving, plugging in numbers here. Because this is all just numbers, right? Okay, so let's do um, the log of 5 minus the log of 8 and I get minus 2 point let's bring that up here minus 0 0.2041 that's this calculation x is equal to and I'm going to do minus 3 log 5 minus 3 log 8 and on that side I get minus 4.8062. And so now I'm just going to divide that number by minus 0 0.2041 and I get 23.5481. So x is approximately equal to 23.5481 to four decimals. Okay, now the last one on this page. It says the log of x minus 5 plus the log of x minus 3 is equal to 1. Okay, so with this one, now what we've got is we've got, um, we've got some logs that we're adding together. So it would be nice if we could combine this into one log. Express as a single log, remember doing that little exercise, and then write it in exponential form to solve. Okay, so because this is plus, this is the log base 3 of x minus 5 times x minus 3. And that's going to be equal to 1. So now you're going to expand this. You're going to get a quadratic. This is one of these little quadratic questions. So log base 3 of x squared minus 3 minus 5 is minus 8x plus 15 is equal to 1. Now write it in exponential form. You're stuck, right? You don't know what else to do. So 3 to the 1 is equal to that. That gets rid of your of your um, logs. 
3 to the 1 equals x squared minus 8x plus 15. So x squared minus 8x, and this is 3, so I'm going to subtract, plus 12 is equal to 0. And what multiplies to 12 and adds to negative 8? How about uh, minus 6 and minus 2? So x minus 2, x minus 6 equals 0. <clears throat> and that's going to give me two possible solutions. x is equal to 2 and 6. And I have to check to make sure that I don't have an inadmissible solution here. So if I get the log of a negative number, that's not going to work. So if I put in a 2 here, I would have 2 minus 5. That's negative log. So 2 is inadmissible. The 6 works in both positions here. I would still have a positive number. So this one is inadmissible. And I would say negative log. Okay, and there you go. That's that. Two pages down, two pages to go. Hopefully the next ones are a little faster. It's taking me a long time. Okay, determine the mapping rule. Oh yeah, the mapping rule. It would transform the graph of y equals 5 to the x onto the graph of this. So in other words, you're looking for changes to x, changes to y. So the y changes are always easy. Minus 2y plus 3, right? Right there. You should at least get one mark for this. Where you're going to goof up, hopefully not, is you're going to factor out that one half. Teachers always like to fool you on those. At least I used to. Okay, so if I factor that out, I get this, right? So now I know that the x is going to be multiplied by 2 and add 2. So 2x plus 2 and minus 2y plus 3. Part B. For y equals minus 2, so it's the same equation, state what is the domain? Did I go too far? Okay. What is the domain here? Well, it's an exponential function, and you know that all exponential functions, your domain is the set of real numbers. So I'm going to say domain equals x is an element of real numbers. Very nice. What is the range? Okay, so the negative means it's been reflected about the x-axis. So what was here is now going here. So that means the asymptote, which is here, your plus 3, when the graph is raised up 3, it's now going to, it's going to still be raised up 3, but it's going to have an asymptote here of plus 3. So the range has to be y, y is less than 3, y is an element of real numbers. And the equation of the asymptote, well, we know what it is. We said it was y equals 3. It's been shifted up 3 right here or here, right? Same thing. Okay, graph. Graph y equals 3 log base 2. This went kind of funny when I printed it out. I think it's a different format. But I'd be determining the mapping rule that maps log base 2x onto 3 log base 2, 2x plus 4 minus 2, and use points generated by by using the rule, the mapping rule. Include also the asymptotes and the equation on the graph. Okay, so that's a um, good question. Log base 2x, what's the mapping rule here? Okay, so again, we have this factoring out to do. So I'm going to factor it out first for you. So you're going to take out a 2, you're going to get x plus 2, that's going to change the mapping rule, right? Minus 2. So x and y go to, I divide the x's by 2, I subtract 2, hopefully you've got that nailed by this point in your course, and 3y minus 2. Okay, so there's my mapping rule, and now I need some points. So I think um, if you recall back when I said if you're going to graph a logarithmic function, it's best to find the points of the exponential function first. So my exponential function is right here, this little 2 to the x. So what I want to do first is find some points for 2 to the x, <clears throat> and I'm going to use like minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So 2 to the minus 2 is a quarter, a half, 1, 
two, four. Okay, so there's my points. So the log base 2x, remember, is the inverse. So I'm going to switch these points. It's going to be x and y, x and y, x and y, x and y, x and y. Okay, so now I have five points. And I'm going to use those five points and this mapping rule to find the points on the graph. Now, if your teacher gives you a graph, you can be pretty sure, unless they made a mistake, that you better be fitting on this graph, right? So I'm going to do a quarter and minus two, and I'm going to apply this mapping rule to it. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to waste a lot of time for you um, writing or doing all the calculations. I'm just going to list them what they are, because I've already done this, of course. Uh, minus one and three quarters and minus five. One and zero go to minus one and a half and minus two and two and one go to. I'm doing this really fast, aren't I? You think I was a genius? No, I'm not a genius. I just like to help you guys out, hopefully. Zero four. And hopefully you've subscribed by now too, right? I'm sure you have. If you watched right into this lesson so far, I'm sure you are a fan. And hopefully I'll get work on some calculus for you soon. Okay, so here we go. Now look, if you look at these points here, see what's happening? They're approaching minus two, approaching x equals minus two. So that's where your asymptote's going to be. So you're going to write that on here x equals minus 2 and we have some points that are going to go sort of like this it's got 0 and 4 minus 1 and 1 so it's coming up like this and it's going to come down do we have the x-intercept no we don't um, let's go to um, minus 1 and 7 eighths and minus 8 so it's down here okay so I'm just going to do a quick sketch for you it's going to go like that and there's your graph okay so remember the trick for that is to make sure that you write out the exponential function switch the points to give you your logarithmic function and then apply the transformations using your mapping rule okay on to a word problem for you here it says the amount of a certain medication decreases by 16 percent per hour in the bloodstream a patient was injected with 100 mils of the medication at 8 a.m. Write an equation to determine the amount of medication in the bloodstream T hours after it was administered. Include proper let statements to introduce your variable. Okay, so let's, uh, let's let M be the amount. I'm going to write it really fast. Blah, blah, blah in mils, okay? And let T represent the time. So we're going to have some amount m at time t is going to be equal to the initial amount. So what you started with, right, in this case it's going to be 100 mils, and times 1 minus, now 16% is 0 0.16 to the power of t. So finally I get mt is the initial amount times 0 0.84 to the power of t. So m sub 0, that's always your initial, and this is your amount at some time t. There's your first part. At 4 p.m. of the same day, the patient will be administered a second dose of the medication. How much of the first dosage is left in the bloodstream at 4 p.m.? Well, if you read that carefully, what it really is saying is that this means nothing to the question, right? It doesn't say anything about how much was administered. It just said how much is left at, of the first dose. So sometimes you get extra extraneous information, it's called, in a word problem that isn't important to the question. So I want to know how long has the, um, uh, the medication been in the bloodstream? So it went in at 8 a.m., 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and you want to know how long is that? Hmm, that would be 8 hours. So all I have to do is find my M at 8. And the initial amount was 100, 0 0.84 to the power of 8. And if you do that very nicely on your calculator, 
we should get approximately 24.8. Therefore, 24.8 mils still in the bloodstream. And the final question for your perfect test that you're going to get tomorrow, maybe, if you're reading this tonight. At what time between 8 and 4? Okay, so that's what we were just looked at here. We've got 8 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Would the amount of medication from the first dosage be half of what was administered? Okay, so we administered 100 mils, so we want to know when will it be half? When will it be 50 mils? So I'm just going to set 50 mils equal to 100 times 0 0.84 to the power of T. So 0.5 and you know how to do this by now. If you've done your homework, you have no problem. Log 0.5 is T log 0 0.84. Aren't logarithms helpful? And so T is log of 0.5 divided by the log of 0 0.84. Now, watch when you do this, because this is sometimes people make dumb mistakes on this question and, and lose a mark just because they weren't reading the question or following through on your answer. So I get 3.975. So T is approximately equal to 3.98. Correct your answer to the nearest minute. Well, this isn't, 0.98 isn't minutes, is it? That's a fraction of an hour. So it's three hours and how many minutes is 0.98 of an hour? So you wanna do 0.98 times 60 to get the minutes. So 58.8. I would say 59 minutes. So three hours and 59 minutes. And they want to know at what time between eight and four. So three hours and 59 minutes past eight. So 11.59 a.m. Okay, that's the time. Make sure you follow it through and change your fractions of an hour to two minutes. And there you go, there's your logarithmic test. One more chapter to go, you must be so excited. Hopefully it's all going very well for you. Bye for now.